Hi, my name is Daryl Baskin and I would like to show you a video of how I place cannulas in an eye that's had a previous vitrectomy. Eyes that have had previous vitrectomies are filled in the posterior segment with aqueous humor and with the placement of the second cannula that aqueous humor can be expressed from the eye pretty easily during the, the sclerotomy uh, creation uh, as that fluid is expressed from the eye into the infusion cannula. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you my technique for um, not deflating the eye during the second cannula and third cannula placement. So you can see here I'm marking the eye. This is a 23 gauge vitrectomy before the era of valved cannulas. This is about five years ago. So I'm coming in at about a 30 degree angle or so, maybe 10 to 20, and then I slowly slope up to close to 90 on that one. Didn't quite reach it. That one was not a problem because the eye was still filled with fluid. Notice all that fluid that just escaped from the eye. So that's, if you didn't already know it, now you know that that eye has had a vitrectomy in the past. I've just um, expressed more fluid th through the infusion cannula uh, to make sure the air bubbles aren't there. And I turned it off. Now I'm placing, I use my 0.12 to stabilize the cannula. Turning off the light, I use an external light pipe to verify off microscope the placement of the cannula before I turn on the infusion. Uh, I don't. Some people actually like to see the tip of the cannula through the biome or whatever viewing system you have. Uh, I personally uh, just do it externally. Have not had any problems with that. I just turned on the infusion now. I'm taping it the uh, the infusion line in place. And now I'm getting ready to place my superior temporal cannula. And this is all real time. I didn't skip anything. Here's my uh, content applicator and my I'm marking the eye again. You can tell the eye is a little bit soft. You can see my marks. I'm going to displace conge with the CTA, the cotton tip applicator, the Q-tip, going in at about 20 degrees. And now I'm going to... Um, backhand my CTA and then take my 0.12s and I actually don't use the tips but I squeeze the infusion line and that's the key to maintaining the pressure in the eye. If you don't squeeze the infusion line with the flat part of your 0.12s, again don't want to use the sharp tips, if you don't squeeze it then the pressure that's placed on the eye, and you can see all the fluid freely flowing from the eye at this point, I put a plug in here again this is the pre-valve days, if you don't squeeze that infusion line then the the pressure that you exert on the eye when you're placing that sclerotomy is going to cause the fluid that's in the eye to be expressed retrograde into the infusion cannula. I noticed this one time when the eye was full of um, vitreous hemorrhage, a post-vit vitreous hemorrhage, and all the blood went up into the infusion line, even though I had the infusion pressure up to 60. So uh, I know that the pressure that we exert by um, placing these sclerotomies exceeds 60 for that reason, and that, that means that just putting your pressure up to 60 does not preclude this from happening. So again, I'm squeezing it. I'm sorry, it's off camera a little bit. Putting it, I'm going right at 90 for that last portion, getting that thick uh, diameter, wider diameter cannula in. And I can see the fluid freely flowing out. And I'm going to take off the other cannula, and then we're going to get started with the vitrectomy. And that's all for this video. Just want to show you one of my tips that I uh, sort of discovered uh, when I was a fellow uh, several years ago in Philly. Hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.